to everybody. Yes, ma'am. All right, great. Can we begin, ma'am, or should we be uh, waiting? Yes, for... yes. No, 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 please. You start. Right. Okay. So a very warm welcome to everybody. Pleasure uh, looking at such vibrant faces. And uh, I, I express my gratitude uh, to the whole team for giving us this platform to share our thoughts and um, so that, you know, we can learn from each other. It's not one way learning or one way discourse that's happening. And I would also request for today's session, if, um, you know, we can all um, introspect a little as I move ahead with what I have to share with all of you. Uh, I would want a little bit of introspection as we proceed with today's session. So today um, I will be talking on how we can rediscover and navigate through our interpersonal relationships. This is in continuation to the previous week's session that we had on interpersonal relationships and conflict resolution. I am Dr. Suyesha Singh. I am a practicing psychologist, an academician, and a researcher. So uh, I will begin uh, with talking about the objectives of today's session. So today I'll be sharing with all of you some strategies on how we can improve our relationships and interactions with other people, because we did talk about how important communication is for enhancing and fostering and strengthening our relationships with other people. Um, so this is in sync with what we did. We are going a step further um, with understanding various communication patterns and how they impact our relationships and interactions. Secondly, we'll be talking about, um, we'll try to understand together why we've become the people we've become. As an individual, why has somebody become the way he or she is? And how does this affect the way we relate to other people? So these are two main objectives of today's session. All that I'll be sharing with all of you, I'll be using a lot of examples so that each one of us can relate to what I'm talking about. So um, I will begin by narrating a story um, with all of you. And, uh, you know, I want you to uh, listen to what I'm saying and tell me if you have ever... Uh, you know, experienced something similar. Is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the story is like, uh, it goes like this. Uh, this happened a few months back, actually. I uh, am narrating is as it happened. So I did not... I, I had not seen her for 25 years. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, I bumped into her in a supermarket. I'd never really understood why we lost touch. She was one of my best friends. So when that chance meeting happened, we were both amazed and delighted. It all came flooding back, the familiar jokes, her dimples, all those stupid voices that we used to share. We quickly exchanged numbers and we agreed to meet up. A couple of weeks later, I went to her house and we had a cup of tea in her lounge. And that's where it all went wrong. I cracked a joke, an old one that we used to share as kids, but she did not find it funny. In a heartbeat, the atmosphere changed. Comforting warmth turned into an icy chill. She did not want me to be there anymore. We concluded things as quickly and as politely we could. It was awkward for both of us. I left that place. We never messaged each other again. It upset me for weeks and I could not understand what had gone wrong. Has it ever happened? Have any of you experienced something similar? Uh, 
this story leaves us wondering what went wrong that's the big question why do things like this happen can anybody tell me sometimes we move on and we are not the same children with the same feelings don't know what happened in her life to make her jaded and away from that kind of reaction that kind of comradery that you shared as uh, children could that be one of the reasons one of you had moved on and the child yes. within you had been lost that right way. yes that can be a reason yes uh, I, anyone yes yes ma'am i believe i believe that um, ost misunderstanding leads you to different avenues yes but yes misunderstanding right yeah. yes anyone else yes uh, i can see ashna's hand raised hi can you hi. Can hear me yes yes we can um or i mean i can't think of a situation like this i've been in but i may still be i'm i'm still you know thinking about the reasons why something like that could happen i think you know sometimes when um especially if you haven't been in touch for a while we don't necessarily know what that person's journey you know in life has been like from the last when the last time from from when you were in contact so maybe you know some things have happened and you know things that which that person's maybe trying to heal or it's totally unaddressed and the joke that you said perhaps struck a chord with them you know it probably struck a nerve um and i'm thinking maybe that's what it is cuz you know if people continue their life without addressing things that is bothering them and it happens a lot to people in general but i i definitely think it there is a lot of that in our own community like indian community particularly women and then it gets to a point even the slightest thing can actually you know touch you off or you know uh, or um, people go full steam ahead and do drastic things which somebody if you haven't been in their life it's so hard for us to make sense of that what is going on because there is a big gap but maybe if there if there was another person who was with them throughout that journey maybe they can make more sense of sense of that so i'm thinking maybe that could be a reason yes thank you thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this uh i will resume uh back to this story in a while but before i do that uh the main question that this whole incident left me thinking about is that uh what happened between me and my friend was that our communication broke down so you know uh i'll briefly talk about i'll try to explain and make you understand why communication breaks down a breakdown in communication is a very common occurrence and i think most of us can relate to it we often um you know hear people speak of things as you know being taken the wrong way probably that's what happened in my case or people biting our heads off sometimes we shrug them off with only a backward glance and at other times there is a deep emotional hurt unintentionally upsetting someone you care about can be a very distressing experience similarly you know when you're trying to work effectively with someone you struggle to connect with is exhausting it can be a source of stress and anxiety especially if that person is your superior so communication interruptions or uh, what i call is communication contamination can happen quickly from nowhere such incidents are seldom the product of anyone's intention it was not my intention to hurt my friend my long lost friend uh, with whom i reconnected after so many years so we are left wondering we are left puzzled about why this breakdown happens and when it does happen what do we do and what do we say next worse still if you're on the receiving end of a babud comment 
you're left reeling with a shock and a whole bag of confusing emotions. So what is this really about? Why does it happen? You know, uh, you know, why do communication breakdowns uh, happen? You know this feeling, one minute you're having a normal conversation with somebody and the next minute you end up fighting or one of the person just shuts down. In both these cases, there's a break breakdown. The conversation, why do we converse with people? Why do we have, why do we talk to people? It's because we are trying to achieve some goal. It could be a social goal. It could be an emotional goal, you know, or it, it can simply be sharing information and knowledge with each other. So the conversation has, you know, when there's a breakdown, the conversation fails to achieve its goal, whether it's being heard as simple a goal as simply uh, being heard or solving a problem or, um, you know, it, it, the goal can be just feeling connected with somebody, making a decision. So this happens all the time. It takes few seconds, nanoseconds for a conversation to shift from a positive connection driven interaction into a negative one. Now, interestingly, researchers have indicated that negative interactions can take a toll on our relationships. It can take a toll on our well-being, on our mental health. We need five positive interactions to make up for every one negative interaction we have with someone who is close to us. Isn't that interesting? And isn't it something that leaves us uh, pondering about how important positive interactions are. One negative interaction can be covered up only if we have uh, five positive interactions to cover the damage that one negative interaction can cause us. So these disturbances in communication, they happen when people are communicating from different parts of their personalities. We all know we have different, distinct, very unique personalities. Yes or no? We operate from different personalities. Even people from the same family, siblings, parents and children, friends, uh, who very close and they gel up together really well. You know, we've stood by each other for years together. But then when it comes to our personalities, when it comes to our, uh, you know, personality uh, patterns and profiles, there's a lot of difference. So we operate from different parts of our personalities. Uh, in psychological terms, we call it as ego states. So does anybody know what, what ego states are? I'm sure we've all come across the term ego, but what is our understanding of this whole concept? Isn't it I, like, sorry. That Isn't I'm it? right and what I say goes. And yeah. you know, they find it very difficult to come down from the pedestal they have put themselves on. Right, right, absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, anyone else? Prangna, ma'am, I think you wanted to say something. No, I was going to say same same thing that I am okay. a right person. Whatever I'm saying is right and you are saying is wrong. That is okay, funny. okay, yes. Mm -hmm. See, when, when we say ego states, it's, it's a form of energy. In very simple words in layman language, it's an energy within us from which we operate. So whatever we do, our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors, they the origin point is within us. There's an energy center, if I may use that just for the purpose of explaining what I'm saying. So uh, each of us will have three levels of these three types of ego states. Within each of us, there are these three energy points. Okay, now the first energy point, and you know, um, at a given point of time, all of these three are there, 
but any one of the ego states will dominate and it will drive and channelize our behaviors in a in a specific space at a specific time in a specific context so this means that whenever we are talking to somebody the important question here is are we fully present in that conversation because for us any interaction any kind of communication is what i am doing right now i'm i'm talking to you but am i aware from which ego state am i talking there are three of these very distinct and very different from each other so when i get angry i do not know what made me uh, lash out at somebody when i'm laughing around and joking around with people i have to understand i have to have that awareness from which ego state am i interacting with somebody so whenever you talk about these interactions the communication it's it's very important that we are fully aware and we be present in our conversations in simpler words if i put it we are subconsciously interrupted by a past experience a past experience which is impacting our current behavior i repeat this again we are all the time subconsciously interrupted by a past experience which is impacting our current behavior and unfortunately most of us are not aware of this subconscious interruption this subconscious contamination that is happening we are unaware of it so today's session i will help you find the answer to the big question that i put up why do communication break down Uh, you no know, communication breakdowns happen because we're not fully aware we're not fully present in our conversations so we'll together try to understand and explore and decode why we think act and feel the way we do is there a way we can analyze our transactions with other people who are very close to us can we do that can we better understand and analyze our own selves and we also try analyzing other people and if what will happen if we know the ego state from which we are operating and the ego state from which the other person is responding to us imagine if we are aware and if we understand that how much impact positive impact will it make on the you know the interaction that we have destructive communication can be converted to constructive more meaningful and more purposeful communication so that's the whole idea of today's session does it make sense to all of you are we all on the same page ma'am with examples if you can ex explain please. i i will do that i am coming to that i'll take up things um, you know much in detail so uh, one important thing uh, for interaction or communication in a few minutes to come i'll be using the term transaction because see whatever communication that's happening whatever interactions that we have they are simple transactions so i will be using this term so whenever i say transaction i am indicating at interaction or communication that's one thing that you have to remember okay all right <coughs> excuse me uh all right so uh there are two things that i will help you understand today number 1 i will um, I'll, i'll i think my screen sharing has stopped i'll i'll reshare my screen just give me a second please vanshika please let me know if my screen is visible Yes, ma'am. Your your screen is visible. All right, all right. Thank you. All right. So, uh, number one thing that we will together try to understand is if you know we can we'll we'll talk about some strategies that will help you understand the transactions with people you are close to, not particularly your colleagues or acquaintances, and we'll 
talk about transactions about some sensitive yet important topics like sex, money, jealousy, pretty much anything that's triggering. That is, it causes a deep-rooted emotional reaction in you or the other person. Okay? So these are two important things that I will be focusing on today. So there are basically three principles, three ego states that we have. I'll explain this with the help of this picture. Have a look at this picture carefully. Don't go by the words that you see on the screen. You may not understand it. But what, what meaning do you derive out of the picture that you see in front of you? Can anybody describe what this picture is? Our ego changes or grows as we go through life and, the, and, and what responses we have from other people. So our ego changes or our um, emotion changes. And if there is something uh, not to our liking, mm -hmm. then our okay. ego, yeah, something like that, you know. All right. Okay. Is it, is else? it a hierarchy? Uh, sorry? Is it like a hierarchy? <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll tell you what. There are two individuals. We see a young girl and an adult holding hands. The white background, the contour that you see on the black background. So there are two individuals. Here, one thing to remember is that these ego states do not correspond to our chronological age in any way. When we use these terms, parent, adult, and child, these are the three ego states. We have the parent ego, the adult ego, and the child ego. The three energy points that I mentioned from where uh, we get energy to behave in a certain way, to feel certain things, to say certain things, we operate from either of these three ego states. The one that dominates would channelize our behavior. So within each of us, no matter what our age is, at a given point of time, all of these three, do you do you, do you you see uh, within each individual on the screen, these two people that you see on the screen, these three ego states are there. One is a child, the other is an adult. But you'll see three different human figures within each of these, right? So these are three ego states, all three present in each of us, no matter what our age is, no matter what kind of past experiences we've had. So our ego states are made up of what? They're simply made up of some consistent feelings and behaviors. Our ego states are nothing but whatever we've gathered so far through all our experiences, experiences ever since our childhood till today, all feelings and behaviors put together within us, they become our energy points. Ego states are not always negative. Also, uh, these ego states are being activated all the time. There's never a single point in the day when one of the ego states is not active. Some, you know, at one part of the day, maybe your parent ego is more active. You know, when the energy depletes, your adult ego becomes active. When that, you know, the energy subsides, maybe your child becomes more dominant. But when all of this change is happening, unfortunately, ironically, we're not aware of it. We're unaware of the changes, the swift, the navigation that's happening between our ego states. It's all within us. Right? Have a look at this uh, image. How do we identify? Now, you know, when I say that, you know, there are these three ego states within all of us all the time. They're always active. One dominates. Then some other circumstance, the other ego state will dominate and it will channelize and guide our behaviors, positive or negative, either ways. But how do we identify that? Uh, this question comes to a lot of us when we understand that, okay, something within us is happening. We have these ego states. We have understood what these ego states are made up of. These are behaviors, thoughts, and feelings. But how do I come to know which is my ego state, uh, which is somebody else's ego state? If I'm talking to my spouse, or if I'm talking to my mother, or my father, or my sibling, or my colleague, how do I know from which ego state should I be interacting? Should I be operating? And how do I identify the other person's ego state? Is that possible? Yes, it's possible. And there are simpler ways of doing it. 
for instance um you know anybody whose child ego state is dominant you know often in their day to day vocabulary the language that they use the words that they use you can clearly identify it's a very simple trick you know just pay attention to the kind of words that people use in communicating a person who operates from the child ego state anybody whose child ego is more dominant would often use words like i wish i could do this i want this i do not want this i don't care oh no oh god not again do some of us use these terms not always but sometimes we do and some of us we use these terms very frequently do we do that so whenever you use terms like these it's an indication that you're operating from your child ego your child ego is dominating at that given point of time in that particular circumstance now how does the child ego state develop so you know it is there since childhood and even when you grow up you know you reach your old age or you are in your middle or early adulthood years that time also your child ego state can be pretty active so whenever we replay any thought any feeling or any behavior from childhood experiences if you replay that again that's how it gets manifested okay are we are we clear up till now yes ma'am and it's very dangerous for people like you <laughs> to read people like me like a book <laughs> <laughs> also um, you know uh, talking about the adult ego state um, these are all the direct responses um to the present moment when you operate in the you you mindful you consciously aware of what you doing here in the now experience so any person who's very analytical thinks logically wants will have a curious question to understand anything and everything any phenomena that's happening why is it happening what is happening when did it begin when will it end where is the whole uh, idea originating from i think i see i analyze anybody whose vocabulary um, you know the words that the person use in day to day communication if it, it includes examples like these it clearly indicates that the person at a given point of time is operating from his or her ego state so ego state is comprised of all the behaviors all the thoughts and feelings which are directed Uh, which are direct responses to the here and now the present moment and talking about the parent ego state i'm sure we do we do use the parent ego state a lot you know this is simply things that we copy we imitate things that we've learned from our parents or any parental figure any authority figure you copy what they have done in the past so when you say that you know um we should always be doing this we must not do this we should do this we should not do this don't do that do this so when you hear somebody uh with you know using words like these it's an indication that they are operating from the parent ego state and it's it's quite possible that you know the same individual can sometimes operate from either the parent ego state some other time the adult ego state and some other time the child ego state that that's possible so parent is often rooted in the past and even the child ego state it is rooted in the past it is only the adult ego that is rooted in the present so whatever attitudes feelings and behaviors that we've learned and incorporated in our personalities from our parents or any primary caregiver will uh you know strengthen our parent ego it involves responding as one of our parents would have saying what they would have said feeling what they would have felt and behaving how they would have behaved and we we all know parents can either be very nurturing caring loving helping or they can also be a little controlling sometimes parents are criticizing and you know they're very strict that ways you know they'll they'll use punishment as a strategy to uh, correct 
the faulty behaviors of children. So parents can either be nurturing, parents can also be controlling. So sometimes your personality will manifest as a nurturing individual. Sometimes it can also be controlling. So you have to identify what is it that you have interjected from your parents. Are you operating from your parents' beliefs and values or do you have your own uh, thought process? That is something you, that you have to pay attention to. Talking about the adult ego state, which is rooted in the present, it is simply based on what is happening in the here and now. So think of transactions that you have with your colleagues or acquaintances. They're usually very straightforward and there is no emotional content. There's no emotional trigger involved in any straightforward communication, especially when we are in the professional setup. So a good way to know if your adult ego state is activated is to examine whether your questions or comments are fueled by compassion and curiosity, or is there a desire to blame, criticize, or prove your own point? Are we all together? I hope it's making sense to all of you. A bit difficult, but yes, basically. It's the adult okay. one that I can't understand that well. The Which one, ma'am? The adult one. Adult one. I'll, I'll explain. Adult one is when you have a very logical, rational basis for communicating your thoughts and opinions to somebody. You're very straightforward. You talk facts. There's no emotional baggage, no emotional trigger that you let enter in the whole communication setup. You talk about the present. Your past is not affecting what you're doing right now or what you're saying right now. You know, facts are here in front of me. I'm talking about facts. That is the adult. Yes, Ashna, you've raised your hand. Yes. Uh, you know, this it's quite interesting because it my mind where it went um is like social media or like TV channel debates. So, you know, because we all see people who come on uh, interviews, TV channels, debates and do not behave like they are in a professional setting. You know, they either throw accusation, call names are really vindictive and. And now I'm starting to understand. So this is why, because maybe the other person's trying to make a legitimate argument, a rational one. And rather than engaging it uh, on the basis of facts or rationality, it's all emotion. It's like f firing arrows at somebody. And now I'm yes. starting to understand. So this is what is going on for them then. And right, right. That's really A helpful. lot of times we become defensive. We all have a very fragile ego. And we want to protect our um, ego at all costs. In general, we want to protect this fragile ego that we have. For that, we become defensive. But the question here is to understand whether we have a rational, logical basis for the defense that we are using or not. Most of the times, there's no logic. It's simply because you want to protect your fragile ego, your sense of self, your mm -hmm. identity. So a lot of times, like when, when you, when you, you'll understand this a little better uh, when I proceed further. Um, so yes, you're right, that happens. You know, there are times when people have all the facts and figures and hence they are assertively trying to prove their point. That's okay. But do they have evidence for what they're saying and what they're doing? or not. So if not, probably they're operating from maybe the child ego, or if they're trying to dominate somebody and, you know, are trying to prove, are trying to prove uh, that, you know, they are correct and the other person is incorrect. Is, I, 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 is there some, okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, do, do they have uh, that evidence to, to prove what they're saying or not? Is it because they want to protect their fragile ego? Is it that they're operating from the child ego state or they're operating from the parent ego state to prove their point as being correct and the other person incorrect? So that is the dynamic that we need to decode. And if we 
are able to understand that we can very easily manipulate and change our reactions, take control of how we would be reacting. You know, if somebody behaves, I'll, I'll put it in simpler words. Suppose somebody comes and starts arguing with me on a very invalid and a very petty issue. You know, I will, I will retaliate. I will try to prove my point. And I will try to say that, no, whatever you're saying does not make sense to me. It is incorrect. It's in invalid. What am I doing? The person coming, fighting with me, trying to trigger me, provoke me so that they get a reaction. So they're operating from a child ego state. And when I react the same way, I'm giving them what they want. If I decide, okay, I don't want to talk about this right now. Let's take a pause and we'll come back to this in a while. What am I doing? I'm operating from an adult ego state. So that is where all the difference comes in. Right? So, uh, you know, talking about uh, the third ego state, which is the child ego state, it is rooted in the past. It is it is comprised of all our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that we experienced as a child. Now, what are the basic characteristics of a child? A young child with very less exposure to socialization. A very young child. A young child would be free, very carefree, happy-go-lucky, very curious, full of energy and enthusiasm. Would want to learn a lot. And for a child like this, a natural child, a child that is not, uh, you know, guarded by the social mechanisms, the social environment, okay? A free-flowing personality that little child would have. So, ka child ego, all of us, you know, the ego state, the child ego state can again take two forms. It can be naturally curious, happy-go-lucky, okay? And, um, you know, not... Uh, criticizing anybody, very open, very loving towards everybody, creative and curious. And any child um, who's guarded or, uh, you know, who has learned to adapt his feelings and behaviors according to the social um, world, the world around us, the social context, this child may develop feelings of guilt, may be depressed, may have anxious symptoms, may become envious prideful and the simple reason of why this happens with some people not only children all of us adults also this happens because we are trying to please people all the time and when when we are unable to do that we become sad we feel dejected we feel guilty guilty for not fitting in right so you know, like the parents can be very, um, you know, critical at times and very strict and nurturing also. Similarly, when you talk about the child ego, child ego can take two forms. You can you can come uh, portray yourself through your behaviors as a natural child or adaptive childlike attributes can also be seen in a lot of people. Now, a word of caution here. Something very important to pay attention to at this point of time is that the adaptive child is one of the most troublesome parts of our personality. Do you know why? The adapted child ego state, anybody who's operating from an adapted ego child state is one of the most difficult kind of personalities that we come across. It's it because... Yes, ma'am. Yes, people pleasing. And for that, we start hurting ourselves emotionally, psychologically. What about a defiant one? <laughs> Sorry, ma'am, I didn't get you. <laughs> what about a defiant one? <laughs> a defied one? I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. A defied child is a natural child. You know, naturally, children are like that. They're stubborn, um, you know, uh, full of energy. They'll do what they want to do not bothered about what other people are saying or thinking about them. They're not trying to please anybody. So that's still okay because there's no baggage that you carry. Baggage of how and what kind of 
a perception or an impression you're creating for yourself in the eyes of other people around you. I so they they went out everything. Okay, they don't. Uh, it is like yes, yes, Ashna. No, I was just gonna say, is you said that's the most troublesome. So I was thinking, is it because that is probably a state where um you are comp you're not really being your real self. It's, yes, absolutely, it's, absolutely. And, and you're you doing. Uh, you're basically following up. Your brain's trying to protect you, and brain's using everything it has learned from difficult situations to adapt but then yes. you're also unhappy at the same time and you can't right. understand why yes yes absolutely you you got it correctly you know this this adaptive child is developed as we learn to change change or adapt our feelings and behaviors in response to the world around us and at times um, we do not understand why are we expected to do certain things and from a very unhappy state, uh, when you don't feel content doing what you're doing, you're doing things because simply that's expected from you. But your reasoning, your rational does not align with what you're doing. So you feel troubled inside, even though you're meeting the expectations of the social world. But you're not content with yourself, with how you're operating. And hence, we call it as the most troublesome or troubled kind of a personality. But this can be rectified. Only if you become aware of this fact, you can take action and come out of this circle. It's possible. The good part is this. And that's the reason why we are having this session today. Right? So these three ego states, they usually show up whether we want them to or we do not when, want them to show up, they're always there. But it's important that we become aware of what they look like. And like I told you, the good news is that this is pretty easy to do. I'll 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 be quest I'll I'll be you know throwing some questions at all of you and I want you to think of answers. Please, each one of you, there are a few questions that I have for everybody. I want you to think and find an answer to these questions. When you were a kid, what do you remember feeling? What was a major theme in your interaction with your parents? Were you always fighting for their attention? Did you feel unconditional love? Did you feel that you need to prove yourself? Think of that one person whose love you craved most as a child. What did you have to be for that person to accept and love you? What did you have to think or do to gain their approval? Nothing. Please think and let, if, if you feel comfortable, you can share with the rest of us or for your own understanding, I want you to find answers to these questions. These are pretty important questions. I'm happy to answer it if that's okay. Okay, sure, sure. Um, but I just have to say that my mom is actually on the score. So, you know, I just I just uh, want to put that out there. Um, so, yeah, I remember feeling criticized all the time and feeling like I'm never going to be good enough for my mom. Never. Um, and, um, um, you know, I didn't didn't feel unconditional love. And I always wanted approval from my mom until maybe like two years ago, because I, I went through this, um, you know, long term trauma focused therapy. And that really changed my life because now I'm able to connect with my mom like I've never been before. You know, I don't look for her approval um, in a way that is damaging for me, whereas before it was damaging for me, you know. But now I have that understanding. But I also understand where my mom was on, you know, where that was coming from for her. Um, but yeah, that is my memory. But if you ask her, she would probably say that's exactly what she felt from me. You know, I was a very critical child because we were always, you know, that that was the tension. Like, you know, you're not good enough for me. You're not good enough for me. That's what I gave back as well. So I know that's impacted her, you know, as well. Right. So. 
yes, yes. it does make a lot of sense right right thank you for sharing that do we have any other volunteer who would want to share ma'am i i would like to share yes ma'am is something we were four children okay my sister and i in third class or second class maybe she got a double promotion and she we studied together all the way now she was a topper and a front bencher i was a fun living kid and always sat at the back i never studied i think me and a lot of my friends only got through uh, exams by copying her one thing she got all the approval from mom for studying aur mere baal putte jaate the you know when this mummy used to pull my hair my god the beatings and thrashings i used to get from mom i cannot tell you but i always always bounced back there was something in me that won't let me be suppressed i was loved we were all loved but i never felt that she got more attention because in school even though i used to stand outside the class and have a dance clap on the head and finger on my lips and every kind of punishment i was still loved by the nuns they used to go there see me outside the okay, standing outside the class and sister jovita used to nod her head and smile at me like you know she didn't see me outside that would be something unexpected all of that with with this uh, with standing i don't think i do not have a healthy respect of self i'm still you know uh, confident and i'm still i none of that has affected my personality as such and here i would like to say something i will i've written a poem about my sister and i and i am going to post it definitely so you can see that i i don't hold anything back and dr shreya i would love to have your comment on that particular one please oh, if sure, i sure ma'am sure i look please. forward to reading that no honestly eh, then then you can tell me whether it has affected me negatively but it hasn't so please that poem i wanted a comment on sure ma'am sure ma'am i look forward to <laughs> reading that it'll be a pleasure and i will come back with my comments on that <laughs> right so uh, you know also like i have a few more questions let's see if you have answers for that also when you were a kid how do you remember your parents behaving were they critical were they distrustful of others were they overly cautious reckless what were their beliefs about the world money people etc my god there were such friendly people there was never ever any bitching in our house no backbiting none of us do it our family much my siblings and i none of our kids do it and i'm telling you it's so rampant in rampant in society that i can't tell you yes. no uh, not saying that everything was hunky dory and lovey dovey and everything no i mean you know ups and downs ups and downs are there yes but it was a very very healthy atmosphere very healthy you know we i am a product of that atmosphere so whatever may have gone on it couldn't have been bad to have affected me they were right. very good absolutely yes honest being supportive complimentary one thing is there complimentary there's another right. poem i've got to post to you that is you <laughs> yes yes i am going right, to do that okay <laughs> right so uh, see i'll i'll tell you what uh, why i am asking these questions why did i put these up for all of you i want you to pay attention to which elements of your child and parent ego you've integrated in your thoughts your own thoughts beliefs and behaviors because every person's parent and child ego states are different so for example when my child ego state is activated i shut down and i can't talk to anybody when it comes to my sibling or my friends when their child ego is activated they get defensive or they may even lash out at somebody it all depends on the patterns that you've picked up as a child if you think about the people who are closest to you what does your partner's child ego state look like and what about their parent ego have you ever thought of that the differences that you have you know if you talk about 
yourself and your spouse or your children or, or your extended family immediate family as well there are differences it's the differences in how we react to the same situation right the differences are because we operate from different ego states and there are things that we have introjected differently since childhood so their ego state their child ego and my child ego there can be differences drastic differences their parent my parent ego state differences can be there it's all based on what i have interjected in my belief systems and then that that belief gets manifested in the way i behave so whenever we try to understand these transactions this communication that's happening now the communication is not happening between people of course there are two entities okay there are two individuals who are talking a group of people could be talking right a leader addressing an audience a crowd there are people but these are simply transactions that are happening between our ego states individuals are only the medium it's the mode through which that communication is happening but the content origin the content that's being delivered it originates where in our ego states the vocabulary that i use my verbal and my non verbal communication everything the origin is my ego state right so uh, you know uh, there are three very important parts of each transaction that's happening each communication each interaction that's happening what do you say what do you say the response you expect to receive and the response you actually receive there are these three important elements in each transaction so what i say or what you say it is my activated ego state speaking it's giving me content to speak the response and the ego state that i expect to receive is the second important element and the actual response that i get is the third important element now often what happens is that when this give and take is happening when this barter is happening between our ego states things can go haywire and that is when conflicts and misunderstandings may arise now communication can be very good fruitful meaningful and very constructive but on the other side it can have uh, a negative stance also it can be either ways so we'll try to understand what is constructive and what is destructive communication and what role our ego states have to play there when can things go wrong and you know how do we mend that so you know uh, the first important i'll 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 uh, you know borrow what rani ma'am said she mentioned the term complementary that her parents had a very complementary kind of a relationship their personalities were complementary ma'am may i use can i have your permission to use this term so complementary <laughs> complementary transactions is that you know i'll again take an example uh you know my um, suppose for example my spouse told me that i noticed you went over budget on eating out this week can we talk about this and my response was wow you're right i got a little carried away this month i'll be more mindful next month this is a perfect example of complimentary communication complimentary transaction money is a trigger topic at least in my experience for a lot of us and because it's uncomfortable stressful and emotional to talk about but it was questioned you know how i've used my money and the way the other person the way i responded was you know the question was put up from an ego uh, adult ego state the response came from an adult ego state so in this case all is good two adults are working together to understand a problem and to make a decision now it clearly um, is important to assume in this example is that my spouse's question was fueled by curiosity curiosity coming from his ego state there can be another stance altogether wherein my spouse's question could actually be fueled by a desire to blame or prove a point so in this case uh, his parent ego is probably being activated not the adult ego 
So either way, the point of transaction is to pay attention to your conversations with the people who are closest to you to bring awareness to what roles you are both activating and why. Another example could be, you know, if somebody comes to me and tells me that, you know, I'm not feeling good today. I am feeling sick. When I say that, my intention is that somebody should be there to take care of me. And the other person to whom I'm communicating this, this person tells me, oh, I feel sorry for you. I'll take care of you. Can you tell me how can I help you? If that's happening, it's a communication from my child ego state to somebody's parent ego state. I want to be taken care of. And that's the response that I get. So it's a complementary transaction between a parent and a child ego. So again, there is balance of giving and receiving and both the parties feel acknowledged, loved. If this is happening, communication can never go wrong. Even if a lot of times the content of what we are exchanging can be very meaningless. But still, the transactions can be complementary. The problem arises when it's a cross transaction between people. That's when conflicts arise. Now, what is cross transaction? Um, it is when I expect a response from a particular ego state, I get the response from some other ego state. So that is when uh, I feel that people don't understand me. A comment from one ego state triggers a response from a different ego state. It explains why people take things the wrong way. The stimulus is directed at one ego state and another response. So if I come back to my previous example, uh, uh, you know, of uh, uh, the same uh, budget, the money, uh, you know, when somebody tells me that, you know, I noticed you went over budget on eating out this week. Can we talk about this? And I get annoyed and I respond uh, saying that, why are you checking my expenses? Why are you checking my expenses? I get defensive. I do not like being questioned. So my child ego is responding. My child ego is responding. And this was not expected from the other person. The other person did not expect me to respond from a child ego state. They wanted an adult response. So that's when the problem arises. When our ego states become, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they're opposite of each other. So it's all the conflict is not of words. The conflict is at the psychic level. And the reason is, of course, a lot of, is, a lot of it is um, related to um, our, our experiences and what is it that, uh, you know, uh, triggers us. You know, another example could be if I say, Rani, ma'am, I like uh, the stole that you're wearing. It's beautiful. And Rani, ma'am says, um, are you trying to be sarcastic? Are you trying to make fun of what I'm wearing? Or she can also tell me that, oh, thank you. That's a new purchase that I've done. Do you see the difference? Right? So that's when conflicts arise. That's how our communication can go from being positive to negative in no time. It's a matter of a few seconds. You know, a fight or an abrupt end to any good communication. Okay? It is okay if this kind of a thing happens once in a while, but you should not become habitual to communication breakdown because it's harmful to any relationship. Understand your triggers, understand which ego state is activated and you know how um, you are going to respond to somebody. You know, understand their ego state also. From which ego state are they operating? For example, like if a child comes and talks to me, I'll become a little childish while talking to him. If I have to explain something to a child, I will uh, not try operating from a strict parent ego state. I'll use nurturance if I am operating from my parent ego state. So you have to understand and be aware of your own ego state and try 
understanding, try to identify the ego state of the other person you're talking to. Right? Uh, Deepika, do you have something to say? I see your hand raised. Yes. Hi, yes, Dr. Sisha. I thank you so much. It's such a good session. Um, I've I've had lots of um things that I could have said, but I kept quiet because I've I've kind I know a bit about transactional analysis because I've kind of taught myself over the years, um, trying to find solutions to some of my own issues growing, you know, through my life. Um, but I love the way you've explained it and I and I love um how you've said about how it's an energy state as well, because that just gives it a whole um, new level of awareness, I think. So thank you for that. Um, the question I had for you was um, if, so for example, um, if, if say for example, you've had to kind of be in the adult state for a prolonged period of time, this is my experience for me, I'm personally speaking, I, I, I became aware of this is what was happening that um, in my interactions, let's say, with some people, I guess sometimes when you become aware of this, you can see it in other people. So you you can sometimes just take the role of adult all the time, can't you? There's a danger of that, right? So I don't know, I just wonder if you could speak to how, particularly for women as well, that we sometimes end up kind of having to be in adult state for a prolonged period of time. And our child state is sometimes, the playful child state is sometimes not allowed to come out or is suppressed for a long time. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, just you know, because to me, my experience is I think it can lead to burnout, which is what I think I experienced and compassion fatigue. And, yes. and, and similar to what you said, I think I realized that especially these last few years, I've just become very, um, I kind of just... I go into myself a lot and I just, you know, the fight isn't worth it anymore, that kind of thing. So I just wonder right. if you could speak to that a little bit. or Right, yes, yes, I'll address that, ma'am. See, uh, what you're saying is what I understand from what you just mentioned. Um, it is not um, the fatigue that you're experiencing because you're operating from an adult state. When you operate from an adult state, you are living in the present. You have logic, you have evidence, you are talking and you're operating from um, all the factual information that's there. You know, that there's reason, there's, there's some rationale behind what you believe to be true, what you feel, the different emotions and how these emotions get manifested. What you're saying is the, the burnout that we experience and the feeling of giving up altogether all right, the distress that we experience, it's because the uh, playful child has been repressed. The child is there. Which child, are you, which child state is dominant for you? The playful one, the natural child, or the adapted child? Because when you dislike something, you don't express it assertively. You push it back. You push back. Why? Because you don't want to uh, hurt somebody around you. Because you want to meet those expectations that people around you have from you. Right? So what are we doing? To meet those expectations, you're not letting your natural child come out and operate. It's the adaptive child that's become more dominant. So it's a tussle uh, uh, you know, a tiff between your adaptive child and the adult state. So, you know, it's very important to understand which of these ego states is active. You have to see the space, the time and the context. All these three things are important. You can't really push back any two ego states and you let one ego state dominate you all the time. If that's happening, um, you should, you know, intentionally think of it, mindfully do something about it, take some action. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you thank know, you. If, if there's a lot of people pleasing, you know, you've set these expectations for yourself. You want to be perceived in a certain manner. You've created that and you want to continue with uh, preserving that image that's there. 
across situations. You have to be an adult when you're at workplace. You can operate from your adult ego state when you are dealing with, say, your spouse, your children, your friends, but you know, not your friends. When you go out with your friends, for example, you hang out with them, are you still operating from the adult ego state when everybody else has uh, let their child come out? Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, that, but I, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I would I would just say that I think one one thing I've learned is that, um, similar to what Rani says, she writes her poetry. And so I found that actually expressing myself in poems or writing seems to be a way to um, allow. You can, you, know, you can practice yeah. journaling, so, ma'am. Journaling well, helps a lot. Yes. Yeah, so this is what I found that, that that's yes. the way for, for the inner child to actually express itself in some safe space, yes. Yes. poetry yes. or some sort of creative expression, right? Right, yes, yeah. yes. I hope yeah. I've uh, been able to answer. You have, yeah, thank you so much. Beautiful, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'll, I'll uh, quickly um, wrap up today's session. Um, lastly, I want to only talk about if communication breakdown happens, how do we resume it? How do we realign uh, the broken vectors in the interaction that we have with other people? So there's simple tricks, simple strategies can be followed by anybody. You know, uh, it, the number one thing is that, you know, you have to become a little more aware and mindful of what the other person needs. You know, does your friend need to be a parent and nurture? or an adult to give you advice. Analyze your relationship patterns. You know, this is one way you can do it. You analyze um, the, you know, consistency of which ego states you are operating from, from. And do you like the pattern? Do you like this pattern? That's important. If not, please take action. If there's something bothering, you know, if th there's a pattern that you've been following and if you're not happy with that, it's time that you change your patterns. Let your patterns be context specific. Let them be time bound. You ask yourself what ego states are being activated in my transactions, you know, by me and my partner, my friend, etc. What ego state response am I expecting? And what patterns do I see? Is one ego state constantly being activated? If yes, when is it happening? And with whom is it happening? Do I want this ego state to be activated like this? So you will have all the answers to restore order in your life. Ma'am, can I just ask you what ego states activates impatience? Uh, Ma'am, I, I didn't get you. Uh, pardon. Uh, impatience, impatience. What ego state activates impatience? Impatience, impulsiveness is uh, the child ego, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> uh, when you are reckless. Uh, uh, reckless or, you know, uh, you act without... Uh, you know, giving something thought. Because children are like that. They're full of energy and they do not know how to vent out that energy. Can that be rectified? Yes, yes. No, it's not. It's not, ma'am. It's not late because you've already identified that. It's only that you have to, uh, you know, channelize that energy um, in other directions. You know, taking a pause before um, you know, reacting. So there's a difference between how a reaction and a response. I know. So you're impulsive. <laughs> when you're impulsive, you react. <laughs> Take a pause so that reaction gets converted to a response. Easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So everything can be rectified, ma'am. You know, that that that's the best part of it. So, you know, uh, Yes. Last few things. Always, uh, whenever you find yourself in the heat of the moment, whenever a crossed transaction occurs, please stop and observe. 
observe what ego state you are in, what ego state is the other person in, ask yourself which ego state would be most beneficial at that moment and take action accordingly. Step into the desired ego state. You have the power, you have that remote control to switch between your ego states. Don't let your ego states uh, overpower uh, the control that you have. The control has to be in your hands. You will be the deciding uh, person that, you know, I want to operate from this ego state and not this. See, we have to restore and take back that power. So I want you to observe the ego states, your own and other people around you, experiment with it, and you will be amazed at the difference uh, this whole exercise will make in how you relate to other people. And last but not the least, uh, I will be ending with Eric Burns' uh, line, we are all born princes and princesses and the civilizing process turns, our, turns us into frogs. Because we all can think we are responsible for the decisions we make. We can work through our repeated behaviors and we can develop tools we need to find creative solutions to our problems. We can take back control of our lives. In other words, change is possible and you don't have to live a life which is determined by your past. Thank you. Beautiful session again. Very Absolutely. nice. Very nice. Loved it. Thank, Loved you. It. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you so much. What are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope uh, uh, the session was useful. And, oh my uh, God, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. That it is very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very, you. Very useful. Thank, Thank you. you. Bunny, do you, we like the child in you, so don't change. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Looking uh, forward to the next session, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> sure, ma'am. We'll plan something soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neha. <laughs> Neha, ma'am, are you there? Oh, uh, she is not in the meeting right now. She has. All right. To... Okay, okay, okay. So, thank you from thank our team. Very side. much. Yeah. And our <laughs> Rajasthani was, I would say, Nagar Utarne ko ji chawa. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Beyond any comment. <laughs> very okay. nice. So when Thank we can you. have a next session, ma'am, whenever you say <laughs> we can plan, we like can concluding plan. today. Neither yes, ma'am. If you can go on, I'm I'm happy to sit. <laughs> yeah, every day I would say. <laughs> I I missed your first part. Um, you know the slides. Will we be able to get that? Sure, I'll, 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 the, the recording yeah. would be shared, ma'am. Uh, we've yeah, recorded sure, the yeah. session. I missed, I missed the first part and I really would like to go back sure, to sure. it. The, slide. The, uh, the parent and child want those points on there. I would love that. Yeah, I'll, that's I'll what I meant. It, the, 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 I uh, the slide points yeah, are yeah. for a yeah. as well. So we can, we can uh, see our reactions uh, according I'll to like that. Yes, hard to I'll realize. share that, ma'am. I will do that. Thank I will you. do that. Oh. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do you do other sessions?